thinking of playing uh, the victories of Marshall A. Sachs. Um, two Battles, Folio Game, Vivictus uh, Collection, from the Collection of Historical Games, uh, Vivictus. Um, looking at the Battle of Fontenoy. Not sure if I'm pronoun pronouncing that correctly. I heard somebody else pronounce it that way, but that person's not a native French speaker either. But uh, I'll try for now Fontenoy, unless I hear something differently. 1745. So William fought. William, Duke of Cumberland, was a general at 21, fought at, at Fontenoy and Culloden, and in 1757 was disgraced after surrendering an army during the Seven Years' War. Uh, Austrian War of Secession um, fought on May 11th, 1745. Uh, forces involved 53,000 allies against 70,000 French. Uh, location 5 miles or 8 kilometers southeast of Tournai, modern day Belgium. Casualties 9,000 for the allies, 5,000 for the French. Okay. Um, after Dettingen, uh, the fortunes of war had favored the French, who overran Flanders, and in May 1745, led by Marshal Saxe, were laying siege to the fortress of Tournai at nearby Fontenoy. An English army under the Duke of Cumberland, George III's 25-year-old son, encountered the French force. Saxe had uh, planned meticulously, hiding his forces in undulating countryside, although the British and Hanover Hanoverian forces broke uh, the French ranks. The fire from the concealed French positions was too punishing and Cumberland had to withdraw. The French victory led to the conquest of much of the Netherlands, including Tournai. Okay, so on the Allied side, uh, this is the first turn. First two uh, formation activations, actually an independent unit activation followed by a formation activation. Those were free, that is, they didn't have to be tested. That's per scenario. So now I'm, I'm looking at the sequence of play from the player aid chart. You get one side in English, the exact same thing in French on the other side. Um, but uh, looking at the sequence of play, I've gone through this twice with, for my two automatic activations. And what it says down here is the inactive player. No, no, I'm, I'm doing that. I had the inactive player do some reaction fire. Movement, actually, Enemy movement is, if I remember correctly, that's cavalry. So this is, um, oh, there's cavalry. But no, I'm not. I'm not going to reaction move. But I'll comment quickly. No, no, I'm no, not going to comment. I'm going to keep playing. So um, there was reaction fire. These artillery uh, fired in reaction fire. These fired in reaction fire. The reaction movement is, again, if I remember correctly, cavalry within a particular range. Um, there is cavalry back here, but I'm not going to, I don't know, for right now I'm not going to have them move up because these um, British moved up here. So I guess, so what I'm wondering is could could this cavalry unit move here as a, as a reaction move, but I don't think I want to... Um, I don't want to mix my cavalry and infantry quite yet. Um, uh, then there's the question of can you even stack infantry and cavalry? Um, otherwise, yeah, otherwise I don't think there's another reaction movement opportunity that I missed. Okay, plain and simple. Infantry stack with infantry, cavalry with cavalry. You don't actually stack them together. So. That's all the inactive player. That would be the French so far. The French in blue over there. So I'm looking down here. The active player chooses another formation and tries to activate it. This continues until all the active player's formations have been tested. And that's the allies. Um, so now we're going to go down here to choose the third, I guess, activation attempt. First two are automatic. This one is not. So I'm coming back up here. Let's see. Choose a formation. Yeah, so I think I come back up here, the active player, that is the allies. Um, then she, oh, that's interesting, fires his redoubts. The allies don't have any redoubts, but 
Does the active player get an opportunity to fire the redoubts every time you come back up? I'm going to assume not. Huh. Yeah. Look at that later. It chooses a formation or an independent unit and does an activation check. So this is the first time we're doing an activation check. And is there anything to say about it up front? Um, I, I know I want to try to activate this, uh, uh, Dutch, this, um, uh, Dutch formation up here. No. See, this is what I was looking at earlier. So on the, the allied left over here is, yeah, allied left over here. We have this, uh, formation that starts here. These four hexes, um, actually it's all cavalry. But for them to move against their the enemy opposite them, they're going up against um, infantry in a was it town um, in a town and behind uh, what do they call it specifically in entrenchment entrenchments um, entrenchments yeah so this is basically an entrenched city hex here so that makes no sense for the cavalry to go against that. Now here's infantry in the open, um, and then two redoubts. So, so what to do with that cavalry? Again, I thought it didn't make any sense to go. No, no, they're not going to. So, I think uh, I think this to move down the line uh, to the center left. There's this yellow Valdek um, Dutch formation here. I think this is the one that's going to have to move. This, by the way, this Moltke um, Austrian unit here is an independent unit. And I'm going to hold off using him for now. So I do think it's going to be Valdek. So now we're going to do the first full formation activation. Um, and I think, uh, let's see, two is the... No, I think I think this too is its command span, um, um, which actually the command. Well, let me double check that. Okay, activation. Um, this is a formation activation. Valdek. This is this is the um, command uh, distance or span to the the Dutch are given a flat three or less by scenario to uh, activate. So. Um, I think the first thing is I need to roll less than that number. It says less than the activation value. That is not good. So roll a four. And uh, let's talk about the modifiers. Are the army commander stacked with the formation commander? No. This is Valdek, the formation commander. I'll move him aside like that. See, he's the yellow formation commander. So he's got uh, this infantry, 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 these two infantry, this uh, infantry, and that artillery. So this is his line here. Remember, it's even though it's the yellow formation, it's not the yellow piece. That's that's an Austrian independent unit. But um, the modifiers are the army commander stack with the formation commander. That's n no. And then the formation commander is, or the independent unit is. It, and this is, I think this is weak translation. Is not at command distance from the army commander. I think it's not within command span of the army commander. Army commander here is Cumberland. Um, they have no numeric values on them. Um, so the rules say that the army commanders have a command span of five. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It does not reach Valdek over here. Now here's the thing. It says minus one. It says modifiers minus one. Um, and it isn't clear. Obviously it would make sense that it modifies the activation number so it goes from three to two this is really bad from three to two and so th to get below that number they need to roll a one on a six on a six sided die so i'm assuming i did all that right uh, as a matter of fact now that i think about it, there's probably an activation these rules are still good i think there's probably an activation example here i, I should take a look at it but i'm going to assume that they did fail so non-activation of a formation yeah, so actually what you do for non-activation is actually um, good, good to know. So 
Um, units are not going to do any normal movement. You still have to move your routed units. You can change the facing of the artillery unit. So this artillery unit could change facing. Um, I don't... Actually, I will. I believe that... Um, if I remember correctly, artil if you have two infantry units or in two cavalry units stacked together in a hex, they have to have the same facing. But the exception to that is an artillery unit can have a different facing than an infantry or cavalry. Well, I know an infantry unit. This is an infantry unit. I want to leave him facing that one. Well, actually, uh, actually, I don't think he can move. The artillery can change facing. Because actually, I think I do want to soften up this area of the line so maybe the other Dutch can get in there. Um, uh, so you can do uh, change the facing of an artillery unit, fire with an, ar with an artillery unit, Actually, I'm going to go in order here. I do believe they can they can move and fire in the same turn. All right, I'll leave leave it like this. Uh, can he can turn uh, facing or change facing and fire, but uh, this only has a range of two hexes, so the French are out of range anyways. I'll leave it like that. Then we go to move the formation commander. I think Valdek should stay there. Uh, but move the army commander once per turn only. I do want to move Cumberland. Uh, leaders don't have facing. Oh. <laughs> I do need to know what their movement allowance is, though. Moving commanders, army commanders, and Louis the Fifteenth. Oh, Louis the Fifteenth is on the French side. Uh, may move six movement points once per turn during phase B at the activation of a formation. Okay, so six movement points. Um, I guess they move like a cavalry unit. Okay. Um, all right. So cavalry uh, pay, uh, movement point costs. So we have the uh, again the gardens there. Um, where's the guard? Huh. That's funny. Um. Oh, di oh, difficult terrain. Okay. So it covers three. Oh, so that's three. Three. And then uh, four. Yeah, four. Going down. You. Oh, going down one level. No, there's not a movement cost. There is a combat. Okay. Uh, there's a combat modifier. All right. So, uh, four. And then uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm going to go over there. Um, so that's uh, three, four, five, six. All right, that should be good. I wonder if I, huh, I wonder why he has a, I wonder what you use his backside for, but he only gets this one move during this whole turn. Okay, Valdek is done. Um, he's flipped over like that, even though he failed his activation. So I guess I'll go on to this um, other um, Dutch formation. Again, I'm going to give the courtesy of this, give courtesy to this historical commander, but wow. Uh, Phillips, Phillips Tall. Uh, so there he is. And it is the, it's the blue formation by the flag there top uh, top right there okay so I again I think um, army commanders down here um, he's still out of out of command distance so it's still and he still has not not still he has an activation of two as well as Valdek so again oh <laughs> I got the one. Okay, 18% chance and got it. Okay, so so that is good. Um, command of formation. Okay. All right, so we'll go through a full activation here. We'll check the command. 
we're starting out here but still look, to look at this he's got all his units here not only are they within his his command span one two one they're also a line they're, they're also a line uh, and can be activated as a line i believe <laughs> all right so i think they're all in command um so now these commanded units all five of them there's one two uh yeah three four and five so all five of the cavalry units there um they can perform following actions in the following oh in the following order while strictly respect res, strict while strictly respecting the holistic constraints he must so move the routed units don't have any yet change the facing of, there are no artillery units so no changing facing or firing with the artillery that's funny, changing, change the face of his artillery units. That's funny since these, so this is two things I've noticed again so far. It don't, it might all become clear later. Um, these artillery units are universal, as far as I can tell. Unless the size, like six, whatever you call that, livre, and four livre, unless Unless the, the calibers or, or type is separated by nationality. But in any case, you got a six lever here and a four lever here. Uh, otherwise, they look the same. Um, what was I saying? I was saying, who does it belong to? <laughs> um, so two things. One, first I thought, well, since the pieces look like they're universal, maybe they always have to be stacked with. A unit in which case that side would tell you but no I think artillery can stack alone so if this artillery unit winds up being here I mean ah, anyways I'll, I'll get to that when that comes up but now it says during this activation so like that the, the that formation it says you know change the facing of his ca uh, artillery fire with his artillery that's funny I guess it just means artillery stacked with his units, I guess. Okay. Because otherwise I don't know what, how the artillery belongs to any particular formation. Okay. Uh, then move the army commander independently, but, but he's already moved. Cumberland's already moved. Um, move the formation commander. I want the formation commander to stay there with his units. Uh, and w one of the following actions. Move a unit or move a stack of units, or move a line of battle. So this is our line of battle, I think. So we're going to move. It's just a question of, yeah. So we're going to go one, two, and I guess we do reaction fire now. You only get reaction fire once for the whole turn anyways, and there are no markers for it. But there aren't a lot of markers overall, so I guess you can remember or use your own markers. Um, but that readout, I think, yeah, I think that readout can do reaction fire so uh real quickly on their artillery table which i guess i can show it's a simple list table like this uh dies so is his modified die roll um, and the result against the target um, we'll go through this once at least uh, this time perhaps not again uh tiger is a light unit no uh if they were light cavalry they would have i believe an l on them but they're not light cavalry they're regular cavalry shooters disorganized no the redoubt is i'm not even sure redoubts can be disorganized but the firing redoubt artillery is not disorganized terrain it's just normal open terrain no modifier uh, range this is um by hex after the first one not so so if the Unit was back there would be minus one because it's one beyond the first hex in range, but but the readout let the artillery get adjacent, which is actual. Uh, so it's not against a flank. That's against the front. Target is not artillery. It's a cavalry. Um, there it is. Plus one adjacent fire and plus one if it's sixteen pound pounders. Um, but no plus one for adjacent. So they roll a average three plus one is four. Four is TM. TM is test morale. Um, do they, no, they don't, they don't morale modifiers, uh, plus or minus something difference in morale between the Titus Dave has brought, but that's not for, that's not for firing though. Um, so I think that's just a straight morale test. So 
the morale uh, here. The morale of the uh, cavalry there is on the flag on the middle right is four. Um, so they're rolling. Ooh, I think they failed. Um, so I think they're just disorganized. I shouldn't say just disorganized, but they're. I think they're disorganized. Um, I say I think because uh, I'm not sure that cavalry is any different. Um, I know that result would have been for infantry. 